All right, shalom, everybody. This is Brother D, devoted to Yah, and uh, got a spontaneous meeting here today. I wanted to do a teaching on uh, Yahuwah and Yahusha, same God, same Elohim. So that's what we're going to be talking about. No more delaying. I don't want to delay anymore uh, for this. So I'm going to get the ball rolling. Um, and then uh, after the, you know, after I share what I share, I'll open up the mics. We'll have some open discussion on a separate recording, and I'll put both up. Um, let me get to my share screen. Share screen. Where is it? I gotta open up. I'm recording. All right, here we go. So here's a little PDF file I put together. Some scriptures I put together. We're gonna get right into it. All right. So we're gonna start off with Yahuwah being creator. This is obvious, but we're gonna read these scriptures. So yeah. Uh, God, Yahuwah, created the heavens and the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. He stretched them out. He created the earth, okay? Genesis chapter 1, starting at verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, everyone debates with me because the word God is Elohim in Hebrew, which is a plural form, um, uh, a word, but it's not always plural. It depends on the words that are around it. So if it's uh, in the beginning, God, he created, uh, it, then that makes the God or the Elohim, that makes it singular. And in this case, it's singular. Okay. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But if we go down to verse 26, here's where it gets fun. God said, quote, let us make man in our image. Now, this is without a doubt plural, because you have other words within this, this passage that are are plural words. You have the us and you have the our. And it says, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And then verse 27, it goes back to singular. You can see the difference. So it says, God created man in his singular own image. In God's image, he created him. Male and f female, he created them. So you can see there's something going on here between uh, plurality and singularity regarding the, the creator. So the question becomes, how many people do we have creating or how many beings do we have creating everything? Do we have two beings? Do we have three? Do we have multiple or do we have one? I believe we're going to get more clarity on this as we read the scriptures. Psalms 8, verse 1, it says, Yahuwah, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth? Who has set your glory above the heavens? When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. Okay, here, Yahuwah, singular, without a doubt, or Yahweh, however you want to pronounce the Father's name, he is the creator, singular. Okay, Psalms 33, verse 6. By Yahuwah's word, the heavens were made, all their army by the breath of his mouth. Okay, I don't see any plurality here. I don't see by the breath of their mouth, um, by Yahuwah's word here. Okay, so we know in, in uh, Genesis 1, it says, let there be light, let there be uh, land and creatures and, and, and plants. He speaks. You know, he spoke and the world came to be, all right? We're going to get more into that in just a moment. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 21. Haven't you known? Haven't you heard yet? Haven't you been told from the beginning? Haven't you understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he, singular, who sits above the circle of the earth, and, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in? Okay, this is definitely talking about Yahuwah, the creator. Isaiah chapter 44 says, I'm going to pause the recording real quick. All right, I was just double checking on how this Mac PDF reader works. Okay, let's see here. So, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24, it says, Yahuwah, your Redeemer, and he 
who formed you from the womb says, quote, I am Yahuwah who makes all things, who alone, this is a passage where there is no wiggle room whatsoever. You can't wiggle your way around it. You can't do any gymnastics. You can't do any etymology gameplay. There's no word play here. It says, I am Yahuwah who makes all things, who alone stretches out the heavens, who spreads out the earth by myself. Wow. It doesn't get any better than that. It does not get any better than that. I want y'all to see my face. Y'all need to see my face when I'm, read, when I'm reading this stuff. It is, there's no, this is my favorite passage regarding him being creator. Alone, by himself. However, we have to wrestle. What's going on? Because in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, we have let us make man in our image, in our likeness. We have this plurality going on. So we have to find out what's going on here. All right. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 5, it says, I am Yahuwah, and there is no one else, nobody else. Besides me, there is no God. I decided to throw that one in there, even though it's not talking about creator or creating. That's going to be in probably every video I do, this, this verse right here, okay? I am Yahuwah, and there is no one else. Besides me, there is no Elohim. There is no God. So that means there's no image, there's no created thing, there's no heavenly being, there's no heavenly creatures besides him. He is God. Now, how does that mix in with other scriptures? We're going to keep going. Psalms 95. Oh, come, let's worship and bow down. Let's kneel before Yahuwah, our maker. He is our maker. He is our creator. Isaiah 48. Listen to me, O oh, Yaakov. And Yisrael, my called, I am he, I am the first, I am also the last. Yes, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spread out the heavens. When I called to them, they stand up together. Let's go to the next one. All right, those are my passages for Yahuwah, being creator. We don't have many for Yahusha but we do have them and they do exist. And we're gonna go into them right now. John chapter one, classic. This has been debated and wrestled with throughout the centuries, okay? Jehovah's Witnesses and their uh, distorted translation of the scriptures in John 1.1, 1, 1, they distort it. And you know they say, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was a small G-O-D. I think that is horrendous, um, but we're going to read why. That doesn't make any sense. So John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I know a lot of people like to, like to replace God with Yahuwah, but you're not going to get the full understanding of this if you replace words with words that are not there. The word that is there in the Greek is um, theos. Theos, Theon, Theao, the, however version of Theos you want to say, the word God is there. And in, in the Hebrew scriptures, many times the word Elohim is there. And a lot of people like to replace Elohim with Yahuwah, but you're not going to be able to see the connection between Yahusha and Yahuwah if you take out the word Elohim, because there is an essence of what they both are that they share. And it's their God-likeness, it's their Godness, it's their Elohimness, if you want to call it, okay? So in the beginning, was the word we we just read in one of the other passages let me go back where is it at right here psalms 33 verse 6 by yahuwah's word the heavens were made all their army by the breath of his mouth okay so he's not using the breath of someone else's mouth he's not using something else outside of himself he's using some he's using something that comes from what he is and who he is. It's his breath. Okay? So now we're reading in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, which we know definitely is the truth. Elohim, Yahuwah, existed. And he had a voice. He always had a voice. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. That makes sense? Just like my word is with me. <laughs> my word is inside of me. All my thoughts are in here. All my feelings are in here. 
they're not outside of me yet unless I release them. Once I release them, now they're in different parts of the world through YouTube, through the internet, through Facebook. Okay, now parts of my heart and parts of my mind and my words have gone through different parts of the world. Hallelujah. So check this out. The word was with God and the word was God. My words are me. My words are me. That's my authority. That's my power. That's the power of my tongue going into your heart, going into your mind, going into your ears, going into your living room, going into your phone. It's me. So when you hear those words, you're hearing me, okay? But more importantly, you're hearing Yahuwah's words because I don't get the ultimate credit for what I'm reading. These words come from him, and all I'm doing is repeating it, okay? But the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Now here's what becomes interesting is the word, the breath that comes out of Yahuwah's mouth now has personality. It now has personality, and that, that's ultimately, definitely the case, okay? Not only did Yahuwah speak, but he, also, he actually allowed his verbal, his heart, his mind, his word to become an image, okay? We're going to get into that. All things were made through him. Without him was not anything made that was made, Okay? So this, this word that came from Yahuwah, that is Yahuwah, made all things. So really, at the end of the day, we still have singularity going on here, don't we? There's no contradiction. It's still one person that's creating everything. Because at the end of the day, it's him. Right? But we have the him now. All things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Now we have another being. That's where it makes it, that's where the us comes in. There's no, other, there's no other answer for this. I've seen the different possibilities. I've seen the different explanations of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Many say that it's the majestic plural being used, that it's God speaking amongst his empire, and, but he's using this majestic plural saying, let us make man, but he ends up really making man. I was into that for a while. You know, I, I embraced that for a while when I was like against Trinity and all that. But after a while, I was like, yeah, that don't make any sense. You know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Because there was definitely multiple people creating everything. And right here we see uh, the sun. Well, we're going to get into more of it. But there's something else. There's someone else creating things. So it doesn't make any sense. The angel, there, another explanation says that he used the angels to create everything. And I don't see that being proven in scripture. It says the angels sang. They were singing in the book of Job while things were being created, but it doesn't say that they created. They were present, you know, but it doesn't say that they created anything. So it doesn't, none, none of those other explanations seem to fit for me. All right. And everything was made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. Okay. I would like to, there's something that I missed here. I should have went to verse 14 here so we can get more clarity on who's being spoken of. Because some people would think that that's, oh, it's still talking about Yahuwah. Well, yeah, I would agree, but it's actually also talking about Yahusha. John 1.1, 1, 1, we read verse 1 to 3. Verse 4 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And we keep going down. Verse 14, The word became flesh. And lived among us, we saw his glory, such glory as of the one and only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we have this word becoming flesh. We have this word that is God, that comes from God, that is God, but that's also outside of God, and that's a personality, has an, is an image, actually came down to the earth and became flesh and dwelt among us. And such glory as of the one and only Son of the Father. All right, we're going to get into that. So this is talking about Yahusha. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. Who is, talking about Yahusha, who is the image of the invisible God? So right now, you guys are looking at a screen. You guys are looking at the image of Darian El Serrano. Okay? What's on your screen? 
isn't a hundred percent what I fully am. Like if you hit the screen, it's not going to bleed. Okay. It's not going to bleed my blood. What you're watching is an image of what I am, but you can also see two other brothers on this screen that aren't the image of me. They aren't my image. You can see their image is different. They look different than I do. Okay. But that's just the image of them. Okay. So you can't have multiple images that look different of yourself. You have one image that is an image of you. And in this case, in all scripture, Yahusha is the image of the father. So when we see him, we see the father and it's not the same. It's not metaphorical. It's not metaphorical. Like, Oh, you know, I have a son and he kind of looks like me and you know, he has my, no, it's, it's a mirror image. It's an exact, an exact image, you know? So who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. So not only was Yahusha in the beginning creating everything with God, with Yahuwah, and everything was made, uh, what does it say up here? Without him was not anything made that was made. So everything was made. That includes angels. That includes cherubim, seraphim. That includes everything in heaven and everything on earth and everything under the earth. Everything was made. However, Yahusha was also at some point made into a being, an actual being. He existed as an actual being outside of Yahuwah. So there was a time for that. And I'm going to assume if, Yahu, if, if the word, if Yahusha created all things, but yet he's also the firstborn, I'm going to assume that he became a being before everything was created. That's the only thing that makes sense. It wouldn't make sense that he created things. You know, he became a being after he created all things. That doesn't make sense. Then he wouldn't be the firstborn of all creation, right? So what qualifies him to be the firstborn of all creation is to exist before everything was created. That makes sense to me. For by him, verse 16, Colossians 1, 16, for by him all things were created in the heavens and on the earth. See, I kind of went ahead of myself things visible and things invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things are held together. That's a lot of creating. That's a lot of creating to give to the sun. When we read, where is this? The non-negotiable scripture we had here, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? The I alone, by myself. Isaiah 44, verse 24. Yahuwah, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb says, I am Yahuwah who makes all things, who alone stretches out the heavens, who spreads out the earth by myself. There's either a contradiction here or you have to harmonize these two realities together. And the only way to harmonize it is to say that Yahusha and Yahuwah are the same Elohim. They're the same God. He is before all things. Yahusha, Colossians chapter 1, verse 17. He is before all things, and in him all things are held together. Not only did he create everything, but he holds all things together. I should have looked for a passage in the Old Testament that talks about that. Yahuwah holds all things together. He controls the earth and the stars and the moon and the sun. He holds everything together. But hold on, Yahusha is also holding all things together. You can only harmonize these things if you agree that they are both the same person. They are the same being. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God having in the past spoken to the fathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways, has at the end of these days spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also made the world. So now Yahusha or Yahuwah made the world with someone else. That makes sense. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, let us make man in our image. Yahusha is the image of Yahuwah. 
humans are made in the image of Yahuwah. We lost that image and now we're called to be conformed to the image of Messiah. We are called to get back to the image of what we originally created to be. Adam and Eve messed up that image. Woo, this is exciting. I love this topic. It's my favorite topic. It makes the gospel make so much sense to me. All right. He appointed all things into, he also made the worlds. Okay, so that, we're going to end the, the, the creator topic there. We're going to go to glory. I only got two topics today, create, creator and glory. And I'm going to do another video. I'm going to do more videos later on on different things. So let's go to glory now. Glory. Isaiah chapter 6, Yahuwah. We're going to touch on Yahuwah giving glory. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, and that word Lord there is not Yahuwah, it's Adonai. Uh, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With, with two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. With two, he flew. One called to another and said, holy, holy, holy is Yahuwah of armies, okay? Or set apart, set apart, set apart is Yahuwah of armies. The whole earth is full of his glory. The whole earth is full of his glory, his esteem, his radiance, the radiance of his beauty. The foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called and the house was filled with smoke. Okay. Isaiah chapter 42, I am Yahuwah, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to engraved images. This is the non-negotiable passage you can't wiggle yourself out of. I will not give my glory to another. That means absolutely no one. No seraphim, no cherubim, no angels. There's no other deity. There's no other God. There's no other Elohim. Uh, there's nobody I'm going to share my glory with. He is a jealous Elohim. He is a jealous El, right? He's not sharing his glory. That is, that, there's no wiggle room. No wiggle room there. Nor my praise to engraved images, okay? Now we're going to go to the sun's glory. Let's see here. My apologies. I don't, I didn't cite this passage here where it's coming from. Let's see if I can get it here. Let me pause the recording. I right, resume recording. Okay. This is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay. I got to fix that. My speech. There we go. My speech and my preaching were not in persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith wouldn't stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We speak wisdom, however, among those who are full grown or those who are mature, yet a wisdom not of this world, nor of the rulers of this world who are coming to nothing, but we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the wisdom that has been hidden, which God foreordained before the worlds for our glory. All right, that's not the glory I want to touch on right now. That's a different kind of glory. It's not the same glory of Yahuwah's glory. Which none of the rulers of this world has known. For had they known it, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord, the master of glory. You can't get any better than calling somebody the Lord of glory, the King of glory, the master of glory. Who was crucified, Yahuwah or Yahusha? I hope at this point you will start to consider that perhaps they were both crucified because they're both the same Elohim. He is the Lord of glory. Remember, back here, we have Isaiah 42, 1. I am Yahuwah, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to engrave images. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, 
Things which an eye didn't see and an ear didn't hear, which didn't enter into the heart of man, these God has prepared for those who love him. But to us, God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For who among men knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man, which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except God's Spirit, his Ruach. But we receive not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is from God, that we might know the things that were freely given to us by God. First Timothy chapter three. My point of sharing all of that verse was that Yahuwah's Ruach, Yahuwah's spirit, reveals these mysteries to us. And this to me is, is, is a pretty deep mystery that is not easy to understand, but I think through the Ruach, we can understand it. And I don't mean to be judgmental that anyone who doesn't have, you know, this understanding don't have the Ruach. Um, you know, I just, I just believe this is true. This is definitely of the Ruach. And uh, I can't separate it. I can't, se I can't separate these realities right here. Ver uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Without controversy, that's a strong word, by the way, to start off something. Without, there's, without controversy, there is no contradiction, there is no controversy here. The mystery of godliness is great. God was revealed in the flesh. The same word that we want to re replace with Yahuwah all the time, this word Elohim, there's only one Elohim that created all things. We hopefully you've established and understood that. There's only one Elohim that created all things. There's only one Elohim that deserves all the glory. Elohim was revealed in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the nations, believed on in the world, and received up in glory. John chapter 12, verse 41. Isaiah said these things when he saw his glory and spoke of him. I believe Isaiah, uh, that's Isaiah chapter 6, which we quoted back here. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. He was seeing Yahuwah's glory. So we have to start asking the question, what is the glory of Yahuwah? And how did Isaiah see it? Either, there's other passages that also say no man has ever seen Yahuwah and lived or seen God and lived, right? But we also see many instances where people like Moses has seen the form of Yahuwah, right? Here Isaiah says he, see, he saw him. Isaiah said these things when he saw his glory. The only way I can harmonize these realities is that people can't see Yahuwah, but they can see him is that when they are seeing Yahuwah, they're actually seeing Yahusha manifesting. They're seeing the image of Yahuwah. They're seeing his reflection, his perfect reflection. That's what they're seeing. Yahusha is the glory of Yahuwah. But yet Yahuwah doesn't share his glory with anyone. That makes sense. Yahuwah is not sharing Yahusha with anyone. Yahuwah wouldn't share his word with anyone. In the sense of he's not giving his word over letting anybody get credit or, or, or uh, uh, reverence or esteem or radiance for his, for his words. He gets the glory for his words. He is his word. I digress. James chapter 2, verse 1. My brothers, don't hold the faith of our Lord, Yahusha Messiah, of glory with partiality. This is a powerful statement, guys. This goes to all my brothers and sisters who don't want to worship Yahusha because they feel like they're committing idolatry. All the people who have listened to bad teaching online, that's what I, I'll, I'll just straight up call it. It's bad teaching. To belittle, to diminish who Yahusha is. And he is Elohim. He is the same Elohim as Yahuwah. To diminish him of that is to do the opposite of what James or Jacob is asking the brothers 
not to do here. He says, my brothers, don't hold the faith of our Lord Yahushua Messiah of glory with partiality. Don't, be, don't give him partial glory. Don't partially give him glory. Don't partially give him adoration and worship. He's deserving of it all. And we'll get into that more. John chapter 17, verse five. Now, Father, this is key. I should have started with this verse, actually. My apologies for not putting things in proper order. I should have started with this one because this is a non-negotiable one. John 17, now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So if we established already that Yahusha created everything, Yahuwah created everything, Yahusha existed before the world was, in the beginning was the word and the word was with Elohim and the word was Elohim, and Yahuwah doesn't share his glory with anyone, we have to conclude that the glory he is talking about here is the same glory that Yahuwah does not share with anyone. That is the glory. It's a package deal. Yahusha and Yahuwah are literally one. In their, at least let's be honest, in their original state, before Yahusha became flesh and dwelt among us, what he was before the world was, was 100% equal with the Father. 100%. Let's go to the next one. This is the last one. I'm going to end with this. Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 to 14. Then I looked. This is a revelation Yehonan, John got. It says, then I looked and I heard of the voice of many angels around the throne and living creatures and the, and the elders. And the number of them was myriads of myriads, thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And every created thing which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and on the sea and all things in them. That, that's the rocks, that's the fishes, that's the seaweed. Every single thing that is on the earth, I heard saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb, Hold on, I thought Yahuwah didn't share his glory with anyone. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. And the four living creatures kept saying, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. This is powerful, guys. I hope that you can see there is no separating Yahuwah from Yahusha other than Yahuwah existed in the beginning all by himself. He spoke whatever he wanted into existence. If you want, he allowed his word, his spoken word to come out of himself and become an image and created all things. And then that image, which manifested to creation multiple times throughout the Old Testament, throughout the Tanakh, multiple of our forefathers and prophets have seen Yahuwah, but it was because they were actually seeing Yahusha, the form, the image. And then that image, that being, that heavenly being, being, for example, the, the fourth man that was in the fire, one that looked like the son of man with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire, that was Yahusha. There's no other, there's no other explanation. That is the great mystery. But that, that man, that being that existed, became a human and put on flesh and was born of a virgin, Mary. He put on flesh. John 1, 1, 14, became flesh and he dwelt among us. 
That's why his name was Yahusha, but he was called Emmanuel because Emmanuel means Elohim with us. So Elohim, the creator of the universe, was actually on the earth dwelling with us as a human being. And then he died and he resurrected. And he returned back to the original glory that he had with the Father before the world was. All while at the same time he's human, he's still a, 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 a resurrected human. He is a human. He definitely still has flesh. And he's coming back. But he's Yahuwah, he's Elohim, he's the creator, he's worthy of all the glory, all at the same time while he's an earthly king. And he's a heavenly Melchizedek priest and king. High priest at that. I mean, all at the same time because Elohim is omnipresent. He can be anywhere and everywhere all at the same time. But anyway, that's part one of the video. I will build upon this foundation. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Shalom.